Hello, I want to show you how to make this model. It's called a rhombocube octahedron. Yes, rhombocube octahedron. It takes 24 pieces of paper. Yeah, and uh, it's called a rhombocube octahedron because it's kind of like a cube octahedron, which is like a cube and an octahedron. So, like, you have these top, bottom, front, back, left, right square faces that are like the square faces of a cube. And then you also have these triangle faces there, there. There are eight triangle faces like the eight faces of an octahedron. But then in between them, in between these triangles and these square faces, you have other square faces. That's the rhomb part, not rhombus, but square, but still, that's how it goes. All right, the way I made this is, again, like I said, with 24 units, there are three colors, that's eight per color, and I made it in these ba made the colors do these bands. Each band here is four colors, okay? So two bands, four colors each, eight per color. All right, so let me show you a unit, okay? Um, here we go, show you a unit. The, uh, I'm using square uh, paper that is colored on both sides, um, but what you want to do is fold both diagonals. If you're using paper that is white on one side and color on the other, you want to make these diagonals with the white on the inside. So you're making both diagonals. Okay. And then open it up and look at the colored side of your paper. Okay, so where the um so that your diagonals are mountain creases. Then you're going to do half of a blintz. Fold two opposite corners of your square to the center. That's half of a blintz fold. Okay. Those two. All right. These flaps will be white if you're using paper that's white on one side. All right. And then turn that over. Turn that over so that the diagonal you're looking at here is a valley crease. And fold all layers of paper two of one of the longer sides to that diagonal. Okay, so I just folded this flap down. And do the other side too. Bring the, the other side to the diagonal as well. Trying to make this accurate if you can. Okay. So you end up with this. Alright. Now if you turn that over, you have these two little flaps. Okay, you want to open those flaps up. You did want to fold those because you need the creases that we made. The little valley creases in there. But um, open them up and then fold the whole thing in half. Okay, because it'll just be easier to manipulate that way. Alright. Now one other thing you want to do now is turn over. We're almost done with the unit actually. Um, turn this over. This is a very basic origami shape. Okay, And on each end you're going to fold the point to the center to kind of make that end square. Okay, like that. Just fold the point to the center. And do the other side too. Alright. So, uh, now, slight, turn it over again and look at this side. Slightly tricky part, okay? I want to make one valley crease going from the center off at a diagonal, say on this side, but I only want it to go through um, this kind of quarter here, this uh, upper right-hand quarter. Okay, so here's how I'm going to do that. I want to watch this carefully. I'm going to pinch this kind of short flap, making it a mountain, and bring it, I kind of stick my finger along this, uh, you know, this kind of quarter of it here, and trying to make this valley crease, this diagonal valley crease, by bringing this edge and that edge. Maybe it will be better if I folded this too. Okay, bringing these two mountain creases together. So I'm going to bring them together like that and pinch. Okay, I'm pinching there. And it makes a 3D corner. Notice I have this 3D corner that I just made. So let me open that up. See, I made this valley crease right along there. 45 degree angle between these two mountain creases by sticking my finger along there, pressing it down, pinching. I'm even pinching underneath too. See, I've got my finger in there. I'm pinching that. But the crease only goes, it stops in the center. It comes off the side here, goes in and stops at the center. It does not continue all the way across. Okay, that's the important part. All right. Now, uh, one other thing we need to do, if you look at this. Now, like I said, this is the center of the unit where, where the um, that vertex is. And you have these four quarters or four sections to this. This one has 
a diagonal crease in it. Also in that same quarter, in that same section, you want to make another diagonal crease by folding this corner to the center line at a 45 degree angle, just like that. Okay? So I folded that down and then fold that back up. So you have a pair of diagonal creases in this quarter, this section of it, and all the others are smooth. All right? That is one unit. Now, you're going to want to make a bunch more of these, but for the purposes of showing you how the lock works, you're going to need a couple more. Uh, I'm going to fold another one really quickly. All right, that's another unit. Okay, so I, all right, so here we have two units now. I'm going to show you how to lock these together. Okay, now here's the, here's the trick. Um, each unit has pockets on the side here. These are where the pockets are. The flaps that are going to get inserted into the pockets are the, the, the narrower ends. Okay, so, um, and these diagonal creases we made are the guides on how to lock them together. Okay, so, for example, uh, and, and the way this works is that if I take this blue unit, it's going to have two, um, uh, say, green units, different, a different color, um, going into each side of it. Okay, so three units will come together to make one vertex here, and, uh, and that'll be a vertex of our rhombocubactahedron. So the way in which this works is that I take another unit, and these diagonal creases we made are the keys, okay? We want them to line up. So I'm going to take the diagonal creases and, um, and line them up here. How this is going to work is that this flap of the green one is going to tuck inside, okay, inside the, the blue one. And you could just tuck it in like that, but that's not a great, not a really strong lock. It does stay. And if you were very careful, you could build a whole, the whole structure by doing this. But a much stronger lock can be made if you turn it over, okay. Now see how... Look at what, that, what we have there if we turn it over. We have these flaps kind of overlapping. But if I lay this on the table and I peel back this blue flap and then I peel back the little flap of the green, then I can lock, I can wrap around the um, small flap of my blue unit and then fold it over with the green flap kind of tucked in it like that. That's a much better lock. Okay, so to show you what I did again there, I pulled back the green, I mean the blue here, and I opened up the green so that I could then, I'm kind of like weaving them together, I'm, I'm, I'm folding their layers together, okay? And then if I keep that together and turn it over, then I can re-emphasize, you know, the creases here, and including these diagonal creases, all right? And that's actually a much stronger lock because they're kind of hooked into each other in there. All right. Now, I'm going to... Now, notice, in order to make that work, I had to make sure that these diagonals were, uh, were lined up. Okay. It would have been very bad if I had instead taken my green unit and instead of putting it in like this, if I had used the other side, this side here, which does not have those diagonal creases, that wouldn't have worked. Okay. That, that would have made bad things happen. But if I was going to, and I need to, put a unit on the other side of the blue, then I would need to use this smooth side of another green unit. I wouldn't want to put the diagonal creases in there onto the smooth side of the blue. No, no, no. Smooth side goes with smooth side. Diagonal creases go with diagonal creases. That's the way this works. You stick to that pattern. You stick to that pattern, and it'll all be good. Okay, so... So for, the, uh, for this end, I'm going to slide this inside, and again, I could leave it like that, but that's not a very good lock. And I could slide it in, but see how that'll slide right out. So turn it over and uh, unfold the blue, peel that back, open up the green, wrap the blue over the green, and then close them back up together. Great. I like to smooth out those creases when I can, or... or you know, and then re-emphasize them. Pinch them again here. All right. This is like one vertex of the uh, rhombocubactahedron. That's kind of one vertex of it. Uh, the, where these diagonal creases are, that's going to correspond to the 
triangle faces, okay? And you can kind of see how um, you'll have a triangle face here, and then a square face here, another triangle face here, okay? Also a square face over here, and a square face over here. That's all the structure you need. You continue this pattern, and you will get this, okay? Now, you do have to make sure all your units have the same handedness. You can... Um, you can, you can mess up the handedness. It's these, these diagonal creases that make the difference. So you want to make sure all your units look exactly the same. 24 of them. Put them all together using this locking mechanism, and you'll get this. It is hard to get the last units locked together properly. That's a real pain because you're kind of getting your fingers inside here. But it is possible, and it's worth it when you're done because it is a nice, solid, and rather attractive model, I think. So I hope you enjoyed that. Good luck.